Tonight, I'm gonna show you how to make a Feastables peanut butter chocolate crunch bar. Stick around. Greetings, my confectionery compadres, and welcome to Randy Makes Candy, where I help you make tasty treats that people love to eat. I was at the store the other day and saw one of the new Mr. Beast candy bars at the checkout counter. I like peanut butter and chocolate and crunch, so I bought one. Research. When I got it home and examined it, I thought I might be able to come up with a reasonable facsimile. However, there will be two noticeable differences between my version and the commercial version. I'll point those out as we go along. As always, I'd love to hear about your results if you decide to make your own Feastable Bar, as well as suggestions for other recipes you'd like to see in future videos. For this recipe, I used two tablespoons of quinoa, one and a half cups of chocolate, and three tablespoons of peanut butter. Here's the first difference. The Mr. Beast bars use puffed rice, but it's specially made teeny tiny puffed rice, as opposed to the kind you'd use to make Rice Krispie treats. That's not my repertoire, at least not yet, so I'm gonna puff some quinoa and hope it's a reasonable substitute. I also used a skillet, a mold, a bench scraper, a piping bag, and a silicone mat. Okay, let's make some candy. Place a skillet on medium to medium high heat and let it get up to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Add the quinoa and shake the skillet every few seconds to keep the quinoa from scorching. It shouldn't take long at all before you start to hear little crackling sounds and see the quinoa hopping around. It's kind of like popping corn, but less violent. When the action slows to a halt, remove the pan from the heat and decant the quinoa into a container. Melt or temper your chocolate and pour it into the mold. Here's the other difference between mine and the commercial version. The store-bought candy is made in a really cool mold with different sized pieces. It's quite nice. Mine is nice too, it's just different. Invert the mold and tap it to let the excess chocolate flow out onto the silicone mat. We're basically coating the sides of the mold with chocolate while leaving room for the filling. Scrape the excess chocolate from the mold to clean it up and leave the chocolate to set. Place the peanut butter in a piping bag and add a little to each mold cavity. If your peanut butter is too thick to pipe, give it a few seconds in the microwave. Be sure not to add too much or you won't be able to cover it in the next step. Remelt the chocolate that drained from the mold and stir in the puffed quinoa. Carefully cover the peanut butter going all the way to the top of the mold. Give the mold a few taps to smooth out the chocolate. When the chocolate is set, remove the bars from the mold. And that's it! Okay, let's have a taste. Slant your va. The puffed quinoa is very different from the puffed rice you'd find in other candy bars. It has a much more delicate crunch, and it doesn't add any flavor of its own, so the chocolate and peanut butter are definitely the stars of the show. I think I prefer the bigger crunch of the puffed rice, though, so if I make this again, I'll probably go that route. Having said that, whichever grain you choose, this is probably as close to the commercial version as you're going to get at home, so I'm pretty happy with it. If you're a fan of the Choco PB combo and want to have a go at making your own version of a Feastable Bar, you really ought to try these. He says, opposed to the kind you'd use... Remelt the chocolate that drains from... That might...